So uh, I went and did a thing yesterday. This is starting to get real, man. We're getting close. We're getting really close to hitting the road. So I found this jewel for 900 bucks on the Facebook marketplace. It's got electric brakes, uh, which, you know what? Uh, I like the idea of having the brakes. It's pretty good, man. Made quite a bit of racket. I don't know what was doing all the rattling around, but uh, they say you're supposed to lower the air pressure to 10 PSI when you're uh, not towing a car. I did not do that. Uh, it was around 20 after 11 last night when I finally got home. But this thing is in like fabulous shape, man. I mean, it's, you know, practically new. It's a 2021 when the guy bought the thing and he had a, a deal where he had to tow his car and he replaced his car with a, a something he could flat tow. I'm not at that point yet. So anyway, I think all the noise was coming out of this joint here. I'm not sure, because everything else is solid on this thing. Well, these little guys rattle. But it sounded like it was more substantial of a noise than that. But anyway, I'm gonna pull the wheels on this thing. Check the wheel bearings. I know they're loose because they're knocking. There's quite a bit of looseness in the wheel bearings. So I'm gonna take that apart, inspect the brakes. I'm sure he never retorqued the lug nuts. And uh, oh my gosh, this is, this is just the one I was looking for and it's way less than a lot of the others that I saw available everywhere. All right, so here's the kind of stuff that, uh, I don't know, just about everybody, every manufacturer, everywhere, and every home guy, they always seem to lack in the details of, uh, almost always it's the wiring and the, like the plumbing and stuff. So, I mean, you know, little stuff like this, I mean, this is not bad, but I mean, it just could have been a little bit better done to where it's not so vulnerable. And things like this, this is right from the Dexter axle and brake people. Got this little plastic button here and the wires are, are just exposed and they're all that way. I don't know what's up with, I don't know. I'm just, I know I'm able to pretend I'm about stuff. It's the same on this side too. Let me show you the underneath side. This is actually pretty bad here. Look at the wiring there hanging down. That's what, like three inches from the ground. And it shows where it has rubbed on the ground already, you know. You know, I mean, it's generally like a good design, really good design. And, you know, This shouldn't be hanging down like that. At a minimum, it should be tucked up in the tube here with something to hold it so it won't come down. I mean, it's the little details like that that just kind of mess up everything. Other than that, I guess I don't see anything else I don't like about it. I mean, it's not that I don't like it, but it's just, it's the way people do stuff. I don't know why, you know, it's just like that extra little bit of effort and thought on how to get something done. I can't really show you the hitch. I'll be showing you my license tag on the car here. So here's, this is uh, pretty good stuff here. They give you a nice little ID plate here. So the gross axle weight rating, 3,500 pounds is the most that can be on the load of the axle. Uh, like if you drove this thing over a scale while it was loaded, can't be any heavier than 3,500 pounds loaded on the wheels. And where's the 
gross of vehicle weight rating here, that would be 3,500 pounds is the most weight you could put on this whole thing, including spreading some of the weight onto the hitch. Um, there should be, I don't know. The uh, owner's documents say that something about um, 4,500 pounds. I guess that's the total weight of the car. It's weird. I've never, never dealt with a dolly. Let's see what the tire ratings are here. Where is it? There it is. 2,040 pounds each tire. So the tire capacity is 4,080 pounds. So it's the axle that's the limiting factor. And these tires are in good shape. I saw the year date code, here it is, 31st week of 2020. So these tires are less than two years old. Yeah, Dexter. Got you covered, baby. All right, jacked it up there. Yes, there's no jack stand. I'm not gonna go under it. If I do need to go under it, I'll put a jack stand under. All right, got her all double-sided socket. I'm gonna have to get these wheels balanced too. They were shaking kind of bad. Dang it. Also easier when your driveway is not sloped, so things roll away. Man, freaking tires are great, man. All right. Okay, a little bit of play. We're gonna take that out of there. So let me get something to tap on this. We'll need side cutters to twist the cutter pin and usually channel locks to turn the nut. All right, let's try a rubber hammer here so we can maybe, maybe not. It's moving. There it is. Bingo. All right, man. Plenty of grease, that's a good sign. Where's the cotter pin? Oh, this isn't using a cotter pin. It's got a uh, lock tang in there. I gotta figure out how that works. I would never mess with one of those. So what's nice about these hubs is also what's bad about these hubs. That you can pop the little rubber stopper thing out of this and squeeze more grease into it. And then the grease goes in the grease fitting, goes all the way to the through the center of the axle down there by the back bearing and it fills up the void and pumps grease through the front bearing. So you can really completely repack your bearings uh, without ever taking it apart. My utility trailer has had the same caps and, you know, the previous owner of that one didn't really maintain it like it should have been. And uh, the rubber cap rotted and uh, water got in it and it ruined the bearing. So I replaced all the bearings on that. 
So yeah, I gotta figure out how this little tang thing works. It might just be bent up from this flat here. I don't wanna destroy anything. Never messed with one of those before. So let me figure that out. Yeah, it's a, a tang. I just used a uh, small little pin punch and a hammer and I bent this thing back down flat again. And uh, they give you two, which is kind of nice. So I'll be able to do this brake inspection and wheel bearing inspection without uh, having to buy a new. Come on over there, man. my little trick there. I always put those in the hub. Alright. See if I can do this with one hand. I don't feel comfortable doing that with one hand. Great. They look very clean. Alright. Plenty of brake pads left. So here's how this works. These are really cool, man. Uh, when you apply the brakes, you send electrical power to this magnet. This is a sacrificial part. It, when you apply electrical power to that electromagnet, it gets attracted to this surface right here. And it tries to stick to it because of the magnetic attraction, right? And with the force of the wheel turning pulls this bracket that way. Which I don't think, yeah, like that. Okay. And you see what's happening over here. Nope. I kind of need two hands to show you this. But uh, it spreads these things apart. Alright, so this brake pad gets pushed out that way and this brake pad gets pushed out that way. The force of the rotation of the wheel keeps this brake pad up against its pin right here. So the only thing that really moves is this when you're driving forward. This extends out, pushes against the brake drum. The forward force of the brake drum tries to pull this along counterclockwise pushes against the adjuster, which is pushing against this brake shoe, and extends this brake shoe out. So the amount of force that's required by this is minimized by the force of the wheel turning, and you're kind of like, it's going together with it. Now, I'm gonna clean this up really well uh, wipe all this stuff down with towels. Make sure that I don't have any sharp edges touching wires and whatnot. Uh, wipe all that off. Um, probably, this is a manually adjusting, looks like it's a manually adjusting uh, brake adjustment here. When they're automatically adjusted, something comes and hits this little star wheel and turns it every time you apply the brake, brakes in reverse or whatever. There's a method to how those work. Uh, so these are probably needing adjustment. They have been working from the previous owner. This is nice and shiny, it's not rusted, this surface. And there's uh, brake pad material, that's that dust in there. They're in excellent shape. They're in excellent shape. All right, I've, I've wiped everything clean. Uh, this has basically got no grease on it. On these, these threads should be greased with uh, never seize or some kind of high temperature grease so they don't uh, rust up and you'll be able to adjust the brakes. You gotta spin this little wheel here through 
one of these holes. These are little rubber caps here. All right, so while I'm here, um, during the manufacturing process for this trailer, this thing got hit right there. And it's caused a little bit of a bump right there coming out. And this surface right here is what the bearing rests on. So this bearing can't sit flat on this flange right here. So I'm gonna take a file and I'm gonna file that little bump off right there. Now if you look back here a little further, you see the two little black lines there? That's where the seal has been riding. So we need to make sure that that's not damaged. I think we're fine. I can't feel anything there. And also I mentioned earlier how you can grease this thing, pump grease into there. There's where the grease comes out. It comes out between the seal and the bearing. So grease is forced through this bearing, along this area, and then through the front bearing. And then you'll see the grease come out on the front side. So let me just file that off, clean that dust, and I've got to pull, where are you? I'm gonna pull that, or I'm gonna just wipe that clean and take a look at it. If that seal looks good, I mean, this thing's only a year old. I will probably just reassemble that without even inspecting that bearing because I know we're in good shape. I will fully inspect the front bearing. Generally, I go all the way on this stuff, but if I pull those out, I'm gonna ruin those seals. Then I gotta go buy new ones, which maybe I will go all the way on this thing. All right, another place, um, I've got this lever kind of pulled out and just resting up here. There's a little plastic bushing here that goes on that pin. Uh, well, it's plastic bushing, so you kind of don't need grease, but I'm gonna wipe a little bit of grease on that. Uh, this square, pushes on these sides. So I'm gonna put a little dab of grease on these flats and on that. And uh, something I just noticed, hold on a second. Let me get this up here. Right here. If you look at that wire right there, it's been rubbing on the hub. All right, so we can, we can pull these things back out against the spring tension. It's easier when the tensioner is not in there also because it yields. And uh, I just wipe a little bit of grease in there, just enough to give it something. Okay. So here is where we were rubbing on the hub, right there, because this wire is not installed like it should have been. And uh, that's what I was talking about earlier, about the tension of detail of wiring. They just always fail. I mean, this is, I guess, marginal. I mean, they put a clip there, but this is a sharp edge back there. And you know, this moves. Um, I mean, I looked at that carefully and that's okay. But we're gonna have to do something with this. Probably pull the wire out through the back here a little bit so it doesn't sag so much. Or pull the wire up this way a little bit. I'll figure that out. and. Uh, We'll take it to the next step here. Oh, and I already put some grease on this thing. I uh, screwed it back and forth with grease on the thread, so that's done. All right, I got the seal out. I'll tell you the trick on that too, but first off, we're uh, GS17199DL, and it looks like here we got a 2020 November timestamp on it. TRP must be the brand. So the trick on getting these out is you put the nut, put the drum on without the outer bearing, put the nut on and then you use the nut to yank out the bearing and the bearing pushes out the seal. And often you can do that without harming anything. In this case, the spring that holds the lip tight got kind of kinked on something. 
So I'm not gonna try to use this seal over again, even though it looks brand freaking new on the inside. I don't wanna run the chance of something going wrong. And uh, so there's the bearing. I'll clean that with solvent. And there's the drum. I'll wipe all that goop out. Use some brake clean to get the grease off the, the wear areas. All right, there's a pretty big heap of paper towels I've used here. And uh, if I were out on the road or something and didn't have the resources that I do here, uh, this would be clean enough to reassemble. I mean, give these another wipe here. But I've got these wiped off good enough where I can inspect the rollers for damage. And I've already... I mean, a telltale sign of a, of a problem with the roller is you look at the race, it's easier to see the race. If you see a mar on the race, you don't even have to inspect the bearing, the bearing is shot. But everything here looks brand new. Uh, if I hadn't damaged this uh, little spring, I would just put all this shit back together uh, and be happy with it. But I'm gonna, because I can, uh, solvent clean all this stuff and see if I can go find me some seals without having to buy complete bearing kits. And uh, we'll be good to go. Relocating this clip from here to here seems to have done the trick to keep the wire away from the hub. Um, here's the tool that I use for removing these springs. You just stick the thing on there and spin it around, it gets up underneath it and pops it off. And then you use this end to put it back on. All right, so I'm putting a little dab of grease on each of these rubbing points here. Uh, I already mentioned that. I guess that's about it. Normally I put this spring on last. It's a little tough to get on. Um, I think we'll try putting it on like this. I already had this fully assembled and I forgot I had to fix this wire from rubbing. That's why uh, that's already on there. Yeah, and uh, these things, uh, if your fingers are pretty tough, you can just push them in and turn with one hand in the back holding the pin and you can do those by hand. You can use pliers. Uh, there's a tool designed specifically for it. This is what I'm using because I have it. Uh, I'm going to put that on now. And uh, then we're going to put this spring on last. Okay, we got the brakes fully assembled. Uh, our wire looks good now. Uh, and you give this, you know, a little back and forth like this. It'll smear the grease around the wear points around where the shoes are rubbing on the backing plate back up in there and make sure everything is secure okay this is doing what it needs to do like i said earlier this goes like that oops sorry that's how it applies to brakes okay all right so yeah, you can see my little filing job right there i mean a depression is okay a bump is not. If there's a little bit of a depression there, the bearing can still sit flat on the surface right here. If there's a bump, it won't. All right, so I cleaned up the parts. So I used uh, some mineral spirits because it was all I had. Gasoline would have been my first choice. It's, uh, you know, you got the hazard of working with gasoline and the fumes and all that. It's, not recommended by professionals but that stuff really cuts the grease and it's way cheaper this is probably probably used i don't know almost a dollar's worth of mineral spirits here it's like 15 bucks a gallon for mineral spirits uh, so anyway i blew these out with air they're nice and clean i inspect them they look great there's not a thing wrong with them i put the spring back on the seal just so I won't lose it. I'm gonna go see if I can find new ones somewhere. 
and I'm gonna see if I can find a new uh, tang here even though I've got one uh, use left uh, my I seriously doubt that I can buy a new tang anywhere that I know of around here anywhere without buying an entire bearing kit and it may be the case with the with the seal too that's why I'm taking care with that guy all right all right man we hit a home run at uh, AutoZone and got the uh, the bearings uh, they didn't have the tang but that's okay I mean bearings this is the seals um, so that's good. I got all my other stuff I didn't mention earlier. Ziplocs do a great job of keeping your stuff clean. So we're ready to go there. I bought an extra tube of wheel bearing grease. Uh, just in case. I don't know how much I have. I got this cool filter. Uh, I need to install an air vent filter underneath the bus where the water tank vents. Right now it's just an open hose. And I got to do something to keep the critters out of that. I've been looking for a while and I've been thinking about something in the auto parts store. This wasn't too cheap, but that's going to work. Um, I guess that's it. Oh, and I bought a case of brake clean. They had it on sale for $3.99 a can. So I got a whole case. So let me get, uh, let's go in here. Uh, I'm going to pack these bearings. I have a wheel packing, wheel bearing packing tool that uh, should be right over here. It's UPS. I used to keep that inside something. Oh, it's inside here. Yeah, it's been so long. Let's see if I can dig this thing out of here. I keep my stuff clean. I keep it in inside containers. I got two of these. This one here is dirty, so this is the one I'm or stain anyway. This is the one I should probably use since I've been probably using it. <clears throat> okay, let me show you how that works. Okay, you unscrew the top and you put the bearing in there. And then you attach your grease gun there. Hmm, this is going to be tough with one hand. I want to show you it working. Hold on. Now we're just pumping the grease gun, and you'll see it come out at the bottom of the bearing. It's a fully packed berry. So we gave that a final wipe and a squirt with brake clean to get on any residue dirt that may have settled in there and uh, completely coated that area with grease. We're going to give it more in a few minutes. I still got to pack the larger wheel bearing. So far I've done just a smaller one. Oopsie. All right. So I packed the bearing and then I smeared grease around the outside diameter of the bearing just to fill the voids and inserted it and then used a grease gun to fill that void right there. And now we're ready to install the wheel seal, which is this guy right here. And here's what you use to put the seals in and also bearing races. Monte Cristo. Actually, that's just a cigar box. So these are uh, bearing race drivers that fits the bearing race and you pound it in with a hammer into this little handle. So since that's the seal, you need to get one of these that's about that size. There we go. And normally this would be used in that direction to install a bearing race, but we install it backwards when installing a seal. All right, so we're ready to drive that in. All right, I'm gonna not be able to do this with one hand because I got to use a hammer in one and that in the other. But uh, hang on. 
All right, I got it started. It's almost all the way in, actually. And you only need to go until you're flush a little bit more. It's pretty good. It'd be better to have something that would bridge across this diameter so it, it will hit on this when that's all the way in. But this is the biggest one I got. So, so next I'm going to take and uh, fill this void between the seal and that with grease. Now, I guess I could just use the nipple on the axle hub, and uh, I guess I will just do that. But um, if you were working on bearings and didn't have that Dexter axle with the easy lube, that's what I would do. I would fill that void around there and then I would fill the back side of this bearing up under there, flush with grease, flush with the hole. All right, a bit about brake adjustment here. So you, you turn this star wheel to adjust the brakes and normally it's done through that little opening right there in the back I've already knocked out this plug and use what's called a brake spoon it's a it's like a screwdriver deal that's got a curve to it so you can get in there and flick that thing around but uh, I just uh, use a pair of pliers on this and turn that and keep test fitting the drum until I get close now these brakes are already worn in so you want them just like barely touching. It doesn't need to be rubbing. Uh, they're gonna kind of seat in a little bit once you apply the brakes, when things settle in their in their original places. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm really close. Uh, I kinda, I don't think I can show you this one in. Let's give this a shot. All right. No, I'm not gonna be able to do this with one hand. close there okay so now I'm gonna pull this back off a little bit wipe this clean I'm put some more grease in there put the front the outer bearing in and then the anti-rotation washer then the bend tang and then the nut and then we got to adjust our wheel bearings all right, so that's how much grease I would put around there if this was not an easy lube, but I'm doing it anyway. And we drop our fully packed bearing in there. Now I'm gonna fill this area with grease, like that. Uh, next, I'm gonna use two hands. I gotta keep a finger over this so the bearing doesn't fall out and stick it up on the axle. All right, anti-rotation washer. There's the tang, the lock tang for the nut. All right, so now here's the thing with the bearing adjustment. Very often the uh, right amount of tightness for the bearing doesn't align with the uh, castellations in the nut. Let me get this all the way on there. And I'll show you what I mean. Hold on. All right, when when you're doing the wheel bearing adjustment, you you do it while you're turning the, the wheel and you're kind of tightening in right there, it's hitting. Um, all right. So you want your bearing adjustment to be touching and then just like, off a tad like that so you've got zero lash but no tension on it okay other people may have better ideas on that but uh, that's the way I've been doing this for about 40 years and I've been having success okay so now here's what I want to show you these are the original bearings original races and all the original washers and everything and this was in there like that. 
and I had that play in it. All right, so we need to go tighter than that. That's the tang that was bent. All right, I can probably get that tang there and we'll be okay with that. I'll bend that tang up in there and that's a little bit looser than I'd like, but I can live with that. Um, so what you can do, you could take the nut off, get all the grease off, and carefully grind the back of the nut. Just, we're only talking maybe five thousandths of an inch or something, ten thousandths, maybe too much. And then the nut will turn a little bit more when you tighten it, and you can get to the next tang on the, the lock, lock tab, or the cotter pinhole, whatever the case may be. Uh, this one's got the Dexter grease fitting here in the middle, so you, you Evidently, right, you can't have a cotter pin going across there, so they use the lock tang. So I need a little uh, pointy tool and get up underneath that and bend that guy up. And then we'll be ready. I'm going to pump some grease in here and you can see how this thing works. And uh, we'll, we're, this is done. This wheel is done. Uh, I can give it a little bit more of a brake adjustment from the back side. But uh, already it's, it's ready to rock and roll. All right, so I bent the tang up right there and now the nut can't turn. And uh, it's a hair less than I would like it, yeah, but I'm not getting any movement in the wheel. And that's fine. The noise you hear is the brakes rubbing. Well, you hear two things. You hear the rolling of the bearing and the scraping of the brakes. All right, here we go. See that? Pop a little air out here, like a little fart. And we're filling up that whole hub in there. Guess I could have put a whole handful of grease in there, make it easier. There it goes. All right, so I'm gonna stop there. We are fully greased. Put the hub cap on and play with the brake adjustment a little bit next. All right, so here's a brake spoon. They come in all different kinds of sizes and shapes. This is uh, probably 40 or 50 year old tool. So uh, the trailer is sitting on this tire right now. I had to disconnect the car to go to the auto parts store. So uh, hopefully it's not gonna be in the way of the spoon. So it would be handy now to remember which way the brake adjuster screw turns to a tightening direction. Let's see if I can. Oh man, sun's right in my face. Alright. You just there you go. One little turn at a time. Does it feel like I'm turn oh there we go. That was a turn. That was a turn. That was a turn. Alright. Alright, so we're gonna tighten that up until the brake drags too much. All right, hopefully I'm going the right way. And then, uh, then we're gonna back it off some so it spins freely. All right, so this is way tighter than it needs to be to be operable, okay? But that, what that does, That gets everything kind of seated in place. And then you back it off until it spins free. That was going the wrong way earlier. Okay, one, two, try that. Not yet, I need two hands. 
Okay, so I click, I backed it off about four clicks and the brakes are just barely touching. All right, so what I should have done and didn't while I had the wheel apart was double check that the magnet was good. But uh, I think I'll do that right now. Uh, and all I gotta do is hook a battery up to the, battery power up to the electrical connector for that. And uh, you'll hear them click. Okay, left wheel's all done. Brakes are adjusted. I used the bus uh, electrical system to apply power to the brakes with my little woman stepping on the brake pedal. The magnets are working great. The brakes apply. Um, the only thing I haven't done is get the wheels balanced. They're not that bad. Uh, I did feel it shaking when I was pulling the dolly with my car. But I don't think I'll ever notice it while I'm pulling it with the bus. So I'm just going to forget about getting the wheels balanced. Um, so this wheel's done. Um, I do want to improve that wiring there just a tad. Still got to fix that. And uh, we got to do this wheel next. Well, the right side doesn't look quite as good as the left. The grease has turned all black. The seal was leaking. We got grease slung out everywhere. That same phenomenon with this clip probably needing to be closer to here to hold this wire further away from this area of the hub. All right, let's wipe this thing down and go through it. At least the brake shoes are clean enough that uh, they're not all greased. But there's grease on the magnet, so it wasn't doing as good a job. It's probably a little bit lubed up here. Yeah, it's, it's kind of slick here a little bit. You can see where I put the nut on and yanked the drum off and it pulls the bearing in the seal out. Well, you know what they say about assume. When I took apart the left side, I assumed the right side would be the same. But uh, like I was mentioning earlier, the thing that's nice about these Dexter hubs that lets you grease them is also what is not good about them. This little rubber guy here doesn't fit so tight. And water got in this thing just a tad. And we've got rust. This bearing cage was rusted. I wire brushed it between each bearing. But all the bearings are slightly discolored orange. All the rollers, that is. And uh, I'm just a little uncomfortable about putting this back in. Uh, we got some discoloration here on the inside of this. This inner race. Uh, looks like we might have a little bit of rust down in there. So I'm going back to the auto parts store and I'm going to buy a wheel bearing set. It's 25 bucks for the pair. It comes with a seal. As it is now, I would have been better off buying two bearing kits because it comes with two seals. I already paid 25 bucks for the seal kit with two seals. And shit. All right, so uh, we're going to knock these bearings out. And you can see that race, I should say. We're going to use a hammer and just punch to get that one out. And uh, I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this bearing here in this race. Um, but we'll probably just change it anyway since we got to buy a kit. Unless I can buy one bearing, which I don't know. All right, we're well underway in cleaning up the right-hand wheel, and axle that is, I guess. And I noticed we got a little ding right there. And some buggers right there. So I'm just gonna hit that with a file and make sure that there's no high points. I think that was right close to where the seal lip is. That might be that and this 
this thing here is really sharp. That could cut the seal where the hole comes through there. I'm gonna file that down too. That might be why there was grease all over this wheel. Okay, we're just about done here with the right hand wheel. Uh, thought I'd take a moment here to show you how the brake spoon works. You just turn the, the little star wheel there, one little thing at a time. Okay, so going up with the handle is tightening on this side. Don't remember about the other side, but we're ready to go back together. I repositioned that clip to keep these wires off the hub. Everything's filed and smoothed off. I think I'll put a squirt of grease in there just to purge that little hole a little bit. I squirted brake clean in there, but might as well go all the way. All right, something else I forgot. Uh, there's a primary brake shoe and a secondary brake shoe. The primary is the first one to get pressure and it's the forward. It's always the forward in everything I've ever seen anyway. The anchor points are at the top. When this thing activates and it pushes these apart, it's the primary shoe that touches the drum first, so to speak. And this one pushes on this one. So this one gets more friction than this one. This one gets more pressure on it than this one. This one's only getting pressure from this anchor point spreading. That force is transmitted around through the um, adjuster onto this shoe. So this shoe's getting the pressure from this shoe and the, the uh, activation do dead. Okay, so the short shoe always goes towards the front. And you can tell from here, see how much metal is exposed here? And on this one, it's just a little bit of metal exposed. From there, like that. The bottoms are about the same. All right, Barbara's getting ready to step on the brakes. Hold on. <clears throat> Gotta have it plugged in, right? There it is. Thought it would drip harder than that. Okay. Check the <laughs> okay. I think I'll check the current flow going through these wires to make sure it's the same on both sides. Okay, uh, 2.45 amps uh, was going through here, and I couldn't get to that side easily enough, so then I went up to the trailer plug and I got an amperage reading. And it was 4.8 something, which is twice. So this is the same as the other side. So they're good. Okay, the last thing to do is tighten the wheels with a torque wrench to 90 foot pounds, like the book says. And uh, I replaced the uh, hubcaps, the bearing hubcaps with uh, these fixed kind that don't have the little rubber thing to go bad. Uh, I've got two trailers now, this one and a utility trailer, and both of them, the bearings have been damaged from water entering into the hubs from those little rubber caps. And on my utility trailer, I did the same thing. I just got the solid ones. And to make it easy to put these things in, because they shine like one side than the other when you're trying to tap them in, just use a socket if you got something or something that'll fit over this and it'll go right in there nice and easy because you can do it straight in. I'm gonna go for a test drive. 
I have a feeling that without the car loaded, even with the uh, trailer brake actuator in the bus set to its lowest setting, it's just gonna lock up these brakes when I step on the, the brakes of the vehicle and that I'll have to ride with uh, the plug unplugged for now, if I ever have to do this, because you can see my brake lights. Oh, it's a glorious day here. There's four from back here. Um, uh, otherwise, I'm gonna have to put a power switch, an on-off switch on my brake controller up in the bus. But let's go for a test drive and see how it goes. It is uh, a great day. So the bus pulls the car and I pretty much don't even know it's back there. Uh, the brakes do what they're supposed to do. Um, it won't skid even when I give full power to the brakes when the car is on it, but it does skid when uh, it's empty. I need to get a hitch that has about four more inches of drop to it because uh, the ramps drag on the ground. I mean, over there where my recycle bins are, I, when I came in just now, it just plowed the, plowed the dirt over there. So, but all in all, it was just a wonderful deal. It's gonna be a pain not having a flat toe and using the dolly, but for 900 bucks plus $50, for me to go through the bearings, you just can't beat it, man.